In this video, I'm gonna be taking you through two recent updates to Asana. You may have missed them, either if you're not using these features or you don't have access to the business plan. So you do have to have at least the business plan or higher to access these features. But if you're new to the channel, my name is Mark Key. I'm a business process consultant. I run a team of consultants that spend their day, all day, every day, working inside of Asana and optimizing how you and your teams use Asana. And so thanks for stopping by. And the two updates I'm talking about are specific to the goals feature and then the universal workload feature. So again, if you don't have a business plan or hire, you won't have access to these. Not that they're they're new per se, but one of them uh, came out last month. One of them has been around for a few months. But again, if you're not looking for these changes, you may have missed it. So I'm going to show you what those look like today. Let's get into the demo. And so the first one we're going to have a look at is in the goals feature. I'm not going to walk you through goals today. I have plenty of other videos and webinars on goals and how to set those up inside of the sauna. But the update I'm going to talk about is this one here. And so when we're creating our goals, now we have the ability to put in a goal type. And we've had that for a while, but you can now visualize really quickly what our goals look like at a glance. So I'm going to put in like a key result here and then I'll go back out and now we can see that this is the objective and that's the key result, right? And so really cool update. There it is again. We have the objective there. We drill down. We have our key result. But when we're creating goals, we now have the ability to create goal templates. So like you create project templates or task templates, we can now create goal templates to get started a little bit faster. And so you may have missed this because you might not be looking for it at all. You might not even know it's there. So when you click on actions and go edit goal settings, we now have the ability to create templates. And so as you can see, Asana has given us a default where we can publish or unpublish uh, different objectives, key results or individual goals, and then rename them as such. And so if I did click on this objective here, right, we can have, you know, what the objective name is called. And so we're just going to keep it at objective for now. Um, I like these, you know, kind of describing, you know, prefixes inside of my goals sometimes just to get a bit more visual. This can be a, a strategic pillar as well. You can set this up however you want to. But then I just have a brief description here. So we have very specific objective and then the objective as Asana is suggesting should be significant, concrete and inspirational. So you can have this information here so you're not having to repopulate it every single time. Then you can tell it where you want it to live, whether it's a company goal and you want it to assign it to the entire organization at the top level or if you want to pick the specific team that it's going to then default to. So which team is going to be owning this goal? So we can make changes like that and then we can set the frequency by which the goal owner in this case will be updated and required to provide a status update. So if this was an objective that we were looking at um, quarterly, you know, we would want to maybe look at, you know, updating the status of it monthly. If this was something that we we're looking at for our entire fiscal year, maybe we'll want to look at that quarterly and then get updated or providing an update to our team at that point. Then when it comes to manage access, we can decide on what the access to this looks like. If it's private, anyone in the org can comment or edit, and then we can add our different team members here as well. And as we know, guests cannot be invited, but we can add our team members to this as well. And then when we go done, we can start our goals off that way. We can also create our own custom templates and fill it in with whatever information we want, set the level of access that we want to grant to this type of goal. And then if we publish all three of these, there are different you know, um, requirements that are met within there. And then when we go to add our goal, now instead of just a blank goal, we can start from our goal template here. So here we have the objective, very specific objective, um, make more money. Obviously, that's not very specific. Um, we can, if we had added members, they would be here as well. And then we can just get started a lot faster by pulling in that information. And then we have that description is already pulled in for us and we can make changes as we go. So a small change, but I think a significant one to help to speed up our workflow, especially for those members of leadership who are constantly looking at their OKRs. I think this is a, a cool step in the right direction. 
All right, the second update that I'm gonna show you here, again, you have to have access to business for this, is the universal workload. So we all should know by now that in our portfolio, you can go in and you can stack up all your projects in the list and then you can go to workload and you know assign your effort, whether it's estimated time or percentage allocation, which is fairly new, right? But now, um, as a reporting feature, if we go over to reporting, rather than simply creating a new dashboard, we can create a workload. So that in itself is not new, but what's new about this is what I'm going to show you here in a second. So when we go and we add our effort, we have in our ad estimated time. Uh, there we go. And let's just assume we've got lots of folks in here. They're all tracking time. They're all doing what they're supposed to do. But now we can go and filter. And for the first time, we can add filters where we can have this be specific to only subtasks within these projects or not show the subtasks. Okay. And we can add filters for excluding tasks from different spaces. Right? We can show and filter by task completion as well for the first time. So we can really drill down into the inf information that we need. And then we can look at task type as well. So if we are tracking milestones and the time associated with that, we want to look at workload um, as it pertains to milestone, we can now drill down um, there as well. And then we can also, we've been able to do this, but we can also now look at the workload as it pertains to the entire org the team, the portfolio. And so we're seeing a lot of the features in the universal reporting now come over into the universal workload so we can drill in and get the information out that we need right away. So that's it. Two quick updates for you. Hope this helps. If you found this helpful, please share this video with someone else who might want to apply this in their day to day. But as always, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.